All right, last thing we're gonna do in this section is uh, kind of put it all together. So I'm gonna do letter A, ask you to do letter B on your own, um, and then you can unpause the video and see if you did that one right. All right, so first thing we need to do is um, pull this one half out. Remember how we did on the last example on the first video, um, how we split that off as a separate fraction? Okay, so this is gonna be one over one half. One over one half is just a two. One divided by one half is two. So we're splitting off a two. All right, and when we do that, we're gonna be left with one over, and then we took a one half out. It's like this thing right here is in parentheses and we pulled the one half out. So we're, we're factoring it out. So this two has to get divided by one half. And when you divide by one half, it's the same as multiplying by two. So two multiplied by two is so that becomes x minus 4. Nothing happens to this plus 2 out here. That's still the same. All right, this is the easiest form to actually be able to graph our function. So we have that 2 in front, so that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. We have this minus 4 on the denominator, so that's going to shift right 4 units. And then we have this plus two to the side, so that's gonna shift up two units. All right, so I have my parent function graphed already, and now I just need to perform these tasks. Uh, do your stretching or compressing first, because you multiply before you add or subtract. So if we multiply by two, that's gonna become two right there, and that's gonna become four, and this is gonna become one. And then negative 4, negative 2, negative 1. I'm not going to draw it in yet because I still need to do my shifting as well. So I'm going to go right 4. So my vertical asymptote, 1, 2, 3, 4, is now here. And my horizontal asymptote is going to go up 2. So that's going to be here. All right, then we're going to move our points along with that. So right four, one, two, three, four, and up two, right there. And then this one's here, and this one is up here. All right, and then same thing here, right one, two, three, four, up two, right there. One, two, three, four, one, two, and one, two, three, four, one, two, right there. All right, finally, we can draw this in through those points there and here. All right, so pause the video and give uh, letter B a try on your own. And when you think you've got it, unpause it and see how you did. All right, one thing I want to add on this one before I uh, move on to the next one is domain and range. So I'm going to tack that on here. So remember, domain and range are completely based on where your asymptotes are. So our domain um, depends on the vertical asymptote because we go from left to right, and the only spot where we don't have a point is where that vertical asymptote is. So it's at 4 right now. So our domain would be x cannot equal 4. It's all real numbers except for that one number. All right, and our range is dependent on our horizontal asymptote. It goes from bottom to top, so the only place, only y value that we don't have accounted for is the asymptote. So y cannot equal 2 would be our range for this one. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to do letter B now, and you're just uh, kind of checking your work here. So I'm going to do the same process as last time. I'm going to pull the negative one-third out to the front. And that's going to still leave me with a 1 on top. And if I'm taking out a negative 3, then I'm just going to have x. And negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. And then we still have our minus 2, like that. Um, you could have pulled out a positive 1 third um, and left the negative on the denominator, but that's going to make things a little more difficult for you. So I would definitely suggest pulling the negative out with the 1 third. All right, so this is going to, let's start with that negative, actually. So this is going to be a reflection 
over the x-axis. Uh, it's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of a third. Then we're going to shift left one unit. and down two units. All right, so the reflection and the vertical compression, we can actually do it at the same time. We just need to multiply all of our y values over here by negative one third. All right, so if we multiply one by negative one third, we get negative one third right about there. And if we multiply negative one by negative one third, we get positive one third. All right, if we multiply one half by negative one third, we get negative one sixth. So a little closer there. And so this will be positive one sixth. And if we multiply two by negative one third, we get negative two thirds. And so this one will be positive two thirds. All right, still not gonna draw anything in yet because I have to do my shifting. So we gotta go left one and down two. So vertical asymptote, left one. It's gonna be here. And horizontal asymptote down to, so it's gonna be here. All right, and then same thing with our point. So left one, down two, about there. Uh, so this one should be right about there. And this one should be right about there. Again, I usually just kind of do the other points in relation to that first one. Let me try that again. There we go. All right, and so if we do this one, we go left one, down two, right there. So the other one must be right about here and then right about there. All right, so these graphs are kind of tough to draw, not going to be super pretty. So I'm mainly looking for, do you have the asymptotes in the right place? Do you have the curves in the right quadrant? I'm um, not going to be too picky about points. However, I do want to see some points there. So if you don't have any points at all, that's going to be a problem. Um, last thing to talk about here is going to be domain and range. So remember, always based on the asymptotes. Domain goes from left to right. So the only spot that we don't have an x value is at x cannot equal negative one. Bottom to top for the range, and the only y value we don't have is y cannot equal negative two. So that would be your domain and range here. All right, so I hope y'all guys join one of the Google Hangouts. Um, you can either join mine, which will be once a week, or um, any of our Algebra 2 teachers have them every day of the week, twice, twice a day actually, every day of the week, Tuesday through Friday. So feel free to join any of those. I will link those to Google Classroom, my website, I'll send out an email, a remind. So you'll have plenty of opportunities to do this. So I hope you take advantage and have a great day.